everybody. We're going to talk about chemical safety. And as you know, we use chemicals every day in our lives, whether it's in the house or uh, hair products, toothpaste, you know, whatever it may be, fuels, chemicals, things for the yard. And sometimes we use those things and we may not think about all the hazards that goes on with using that stuff, whether we breathe in vapors that are hazardous for our health or whether we get some on our, on our hands that gets into our skin, whatever it may be. Uh, we just need to be aware of that and realize there might be some hazards going on around us. And so today we're going to talk about some do's and don'ts of chemical safety, how to handle things properly, how to store things properly, and, and what to do, you know, really to protect ourselves so that we don't have any problems with those. And really chemicals are around um, everywhere in our lives. You know, uh, when you go to the gas station, you fill up, you're, you're exposed to gasoline. Uh, like I mentioned, toothpaste. Toothpaste is a very hazardous thing for children. If they get into to a tube of toothpaste and eat too much of it, it can be bad for their health. And so there's a lot of things that put us at risk through our lives, and we need to be aware of that. And we need to remember that we are the ones that are really responsible for our own safety. Uh, using these chemicals in the house and, and in the workplace and throughout our lives, we, we are, need to protect ourselves and be aware of those things. So that's why we want to talk about it today. And we're going to talk about some of the different hazards that can happen and some do's and don'ts, some simple tips and, and safe handling techniques. Um, but what can happen with chemicals is you could have, you know, fire from, from anything. Uh, the different fuels that we use, uh, sometimes chemicals when mixed together create fire. They could be incompatible with each other where they could have um, some off-gassing or, or things that cause us to uh, have health effects from it. Um, possibly ingesting a chemical, accidentally getting it on our hands and into our mouth, um, getting it into our skin could be hazardous. Chemicals can also cause explosions, be corrosive, and, and there's several other hazards that can go along with that. So, so we need to think about that as we use these products in our lives and as we work around these things, you know, Let's be aware of, of what hazards are around us. So we're going to go into some of the do's and don'ts. We're going to talk about storage, the right way to store things, how to separate things if needed, keep them in their containers, and how to handle them properly. Um, also, how to protect ourselves, some simple tips to, to avoid having those hazards with chemicals and, and what to do if there is a spill or we need to do some type of cleanup from that. So the first one is we need to make sure that we avoid unnecessary contact with chemicals. So if, if there's chemicals in your work area that you don't need to work with and they're, they're in a certain area, just stay out of the area. Uh, if you don't have to get exposed to the chemical, don't do it. Don't get it on your hands if you don't have to. Don't breathe it if you don't have to. Uh, it's just not worth that risk and having health problems from, from that unnecessary contact. Another thing is, is know, what, know what you're working with. Now here's an example. A lady on the left here got a little bit confused whether this was a hair product or a foam insulation, and obviously she doesn't look too very happy about uh, the new hairstyle she's getting on that day. Uh, that happened to be some foam insulation that she sprayed into her, into her hair when she thought it was some type of a, a hair product, like a mousse product. And a uh, pretty bad day for her, obviously, there. You're not so, supposed to use that for for mousse? I guess not. Maybe it's a new thing, maybe a new style, but it doesn't look right. <laughs> So that's why labeling our, our chemicals is critical. We want to know what we're working with. We don't want to be surprised or have some type of accident or exposure or health problem from that. And if you look at these, the picture of these chemicals here, you might recognize some of these just by the color and shape of the container, but you may not really know all of them. And so if there's a chemical inside of there, you don't exactly know what it is unless there's a label on it that tells you what the chemical is. And, and that's critical for working in the workplace is have have the labels on all of your chemical products and on all the containers. That way you know what you're dealing with and know how to handle it. So I was in a, a workshop a couple months ago and there was a, a chemical sprayer there, the, the type that you use for the yard, spraying weeds and things like that, had the little pump on it and the spray nozzle. And inside of this container, there was just some blue chemical in there. And I asked the guy that was working there, I said, so what, what kind of chemical do you have here? And he didn't know. He said it had been sitting there for a long time and, and didn't know the chemical that was in there. And, you know, that's just an example right there of it could be something hazardous. It could be something that could cause fire. It could be bad for health. Um, we just didn't know, didn't know what chemical was in there. And so that's an example of the importance of labeling what's in our containers. And when you're done with it, don't leave it sitting there so that somebody comes along and is confused about what chemical's in there. Uh, another example of this is, uh, I've heard of a situation in the workplace where there was a Gatorade bottle 
with some green liquid inside it. And if you look at it, you'd think, oh, great, some lemon lime Gatorade ready to drink. Uh, but turns out it could have been antifreeze, you know, like a green colored antifreeze. And so labeling is critical. Make sure you know what's in your workplace and that they're labeled so everybody knows what's around there. Another good tip is don't eat, smoke, or drink in areas where chemicals are used. You don't want to accidentally get exposed to things just because you're eating in the area and ingesting that chemical where you have health, health problems from it. If you are working with chemicals throughout the day, make sure that you wash your hands uh, before you eat or drink. You don't want to get that into your system. And a lot of times, just out of curiosity, people will open up a container and they'll wonder what it smells like. And so they'll open it up and, and, and smell that chemical and it, and it directly breathes that uh, vapor into their, into their lungs. And so you don't want to take those chances. Don't smell it. Don't taste it. Uh, don't expose yourself in those situations where you might have a health problem from, from being in that situation. This is a pretty simple one, and I'm sure, you know, we've heard of people doing this, and maybe some of us have before, but don't siphon by mouth. Uh, you think about what people do, you know, when they take a gas tank and they uh, siphon that into their, into their tank in their car. You think about that hazard of getting that fuel into your mouth. Well, when a chemical gets into your mouth, it goes directly into your bloodstream, and, and you can have some real health problems from that. So do not, do not siphon by mouth. Take the, the appropriate equipment to do that. There's, there's many different pumps and, and hoses and things that can do that for you. Don't take those chances and, and cut those corners with those things. Um, here's another good tip is uh, use chemicals in a well-ventilated area. Now, I'm sure you've all been in an area where you have like an aerosol spray or, or something like that where it gets these vapors into the air. And when you breathe that in, you can fill it in your lungs. And, and so they recommend you do these, these types of chemicals in a well-ventilated area, whether that's opening a door, uh, opening windows, getting a fan, whatever it may be. You just don't want to breathe those things if you don't have to. They could be really bad for your health. An example of this, I was working on a cabinet one time uh, under a kitchen sink. I had to replace the bottom on it. And I took this varnish and I put on on the surface after I'd installed it there to, to finish it off. And the fumes were so strong from that, it was just hitting me. I could feel it. I could feel it when it hit my lungs as I would breathe in. And I realized that, man, I got to have you know, respirator or some better ventilation here. And so I opened up some windows and doors and got the air flowing and realized that, you know, that's that's pretty serious if I were to sit and breathe that for a long time. And so you just want to be aware of that. Don't don't sit in those areas and breathe that stuff if you don't have to. Make sure it's ventilated. Another thing to think about is, you know, some things don't go well together. And, and I don't know about you, but M&Ms and spaghetti don't seem to go very well. But same with chemicals. Some chemicals don't work well with each other. So acids and bases, when you mix those, uh, can produce some off-gassing where you get some harmful vapors coming off of those. So know what chemicals you have and, and keep them separated. If there's something that's incompatible or something that when mixed causes some type of chemical reaction where it becomes a hazard, you want to have those things separated in your work area. Um, an example of this is oxygen and acetylene. Uh, the two, when mixed together, can have a violent reaction. And so that's why it's important to keep those things separated. Um, with strong acids and weak acids and different bases, you mix those things can cause a real problem. So be aware of that. Keep things separated in the workplace. The other thing about uh, containers is sometimes people will leave them opened up when they're working. Maybe it's a drum or a bucket. Maybe it's a, a bottle or a secondary container, whatever it is. Uh, make sure you close that off when you're not using it. You don't want that to tip over or have a spill or splash around the workplace where it could cause other types of problems. Just keep things closed up and tight as, as they need to be. Um, the chemical handling equipment, such as pumps and containers, uh, whether it's piping or drums, whatever it is that you're using, make sure that it's sealed off, that it's got a good seal, that it's not leaking, that it's well maintained and that it's working the way it should. You don't want to run into a problem with spills or leaks or chemicals getting out without uh, control on them where it could cause problems. So always watch for those things. Do an inspection on them. Make sure that things are working right. And if it's a temporary piece of equipment that you're using, make sure you clean it up after properly. Uh, the decontamination, you want to get that off so it doesn't mix with other chemicals as well. If you ever had a question about the chemical and the best way to use it, the SDS is your best source. Go to the safety data sheet. It will tell you all you need to know to understand the hazards, um, how it might react with other chemicals, the proper storage, handling, how to protect yourself. It will tell you that information. And so one, one 
thing about this is if you don't know, if you're using a chemical and you just don't know how to handle it or how to keep yourself safe, don't be afraid to ask. Just take a little bit of time, ask somebody that might know, like a supervisor, or you can even go online and look it up, find the SDS. But take the time to understand what you're working around so you don't put yourself in a bad situation. And just don't be afraid to ask. It's it's really simple. And, and it brings up the question of, do you know where your SDS are in your workplace? So know your chemicals in the workplace, but also know where the SDS are so that you can get to that information and, and learn how to keep yourself safe from it. When handling chemicals, the SDS will tell you what type of PPE to wear, uh, the protective equipment, but make sure that you are wearing it as you need to. Follow the instructions, wear it properly, uh, whether it's goggles or a face shield or a certain type of gloves, a uh, respirator, whatever it may be, make sure that you have that stuff because it's not worth taking that chance on your health. Um, an example of this is I was painting my basement a couple weeks ago and downstairs uh, painting, I had everything sealed off. I had the windows taped off. Uh, it was very dark in there, but I had all the PPE that I thought I needed. I, I had uh, clothes that I was covered with. I had gloves. I had goggles, respirator, had everything I needed. Uh, but I ran into a little trouble as I was spraying the paint around down there that all the little particles of paint were falling and it was covering up my goggles to where I couldn't see. And so what happened is I ended up taking my goggles off frequently so that I could see where I was painting and ended up getting exposed to some of that paint and uh, made it a little harder for cleanup. But what I learned is, you know, with the goggles, there's different types and there's different, uh, they have these little film coatings you can put over the top that you can peel off. And it would have made it a lot easier if I had a second pair of goggles or some of those covers that I could have kept doing the job and kept my eyes, my eyes covered that way. So always make sure you have what you need, have the right equipment, and know how to use it to protect yourself. One thing is, is to know, know the location of emergency equipment. So an example of this is your eye wash stations. If you got splashed in the eye with some type of chemical and you had to go rinse out your eyes, you'd want to know right where that eye wash station was to go to it. If you're having a hard time seeing and you're stumbling around and don't know where it is beforehand, uh, your eyes could be burning. It could be a really, really bad situation. So know where those things are. Know, know the location in your work areas, where to go to the stations, the emergency showers. Know where fire extinguishers are if you had to put out a fire. And even a spill cleanup kit. Know where that is and how to, how to use that if you ever had to. And that's why we recommend the monthly inspections. Um, on these things to, to make sure that those things are ready to go, that you know where they are and it's ready to use if needed in a situation like that. And, and that goes with the same for any emergency. Um, we should always have an evacuation plan. We should always have a plan of knowing what to do, who to call, and, and how to handle a type of an emergency. Well, the same goes with a chemical spill. If you had a drum of something that spilled out and had to clean it up and contain it, you should know what you need to do beforehand so you don't run into a problem when it comes time. And it's just a good reminder for all of us to know know what to do in the event of an emergency. So in summary, handling chemicals is, is something we do every day. We're always exposed to it. And I think the main takeaway from this is don't be exposed to it if we don't have to. Always be aware of what's going on. Know what's in your work area as far as chemicals. Know how to handle them and store them and protect yourself because it's just not worth taking that risk and having a problem with it. And uh, with that, does anybody have any questions? You can go ahead and type your questions into the chat box or the Q&A box there. Um, I haven't seen any. Doug, do you have any questions to to uh, throw out to to Brent? Well, just uh, one question would be, uh, what are some of the more common uh, chemical issues that we see as we're going around uh, looking at members' facilities? Yeah, like we talked, uh, I've seen times where the labeling is an issue where you know you've got the chemical and you don't know what's in there and protective equipment's another one whether uh not using the right type of equipment or not having it available would be one for the chemicals yeah i think lots of times you know the a chemical poses different types of hazards it could be a health hazard it could be a physical hazard a fire hazard or you know something that'll hurt you if you come into contact with it you know, lots of times we see issues with how chemicals are stored. You know, maybe we're storing, um, you know, an oxidizer like oxygen close to some other fuel chemicals or gasoline or things like that that could result in a, in a bad problem if there was an accident or a fire or something going on. 
So I think it's really important to understand the chemicals, what they're reactive with, and uh, understand proper storage of those chemicals as well, making sure that we're keeping oxidizers and fuels separated, for example. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate that. Okay, seeing no further questions, we want to thank Brent for taking the time to put this presentation together. I hope everybody out there got some got some good information from it. I know uh, I know it's definitely uh, definitely something that um, applies to everyone out there, not just people who who are a chemical operator. Um, we all come in contact with that, and we can all take this home and use it at our, at our home as well. All right, thank you very much, folks. I appreciate that. A reminder that we will. <clears throat> that we will be having one more webinar today at 10 o'clock, just uh, 40 minutes from now, and that is on uh, preparing for winter. So if you're interested in that and you have not signed up, please send me an email at jason at utahtrust.gov, and I'll send you a link back so you can so you can log into that. If you log in right now or if you try to sign up now, you probably won't get your login information back in time. So thank you once uh, once again, Brent, for, for that good information, and thanks, everybody, for, for uh, coming in and, and participating. Uh, now go out and have a safe day.